Hello, my name is Ken Small and I'm an architect in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm here to talk to you today as part of the Frequently Asked Questions series that I'm creating to answer common questions that come up uh, for small to medium scale projects. Um, today we're going to talk about truss submittal drawings and calculations. So this is a set of uh, truss submittal drawings and calculations. Uh, sometimes they're called truss shop drawings which is not really an accurate term, but uh, it gives you an idea of what we're talking about. And sometimes they're just called truss shops, and um, other times they're called um, truss engineering and calculations, which is really the appropriate term. So um, the normal procedure for using standardized structural members is that um, if your structural engineer is picking a standard truss from say a steel manufacturer's catalog and they're using that then the structural engineer includes all of the information needed for the structural completion of the building on the structural drawings. However, if you're using trusses that are not standard shapes and sizes which would be quite common for something like a residence where you have hips and valleys and ridges and different widths of the house and everything is different from everything else um, then in those cases you're going to ask the truss supplier to provide this documentation so um, the big difference here is that you have two steps in the structural engineering process you have the structural engineer who basically includes in his drawings um, the um, information showing where the placement of the trusses are and the structural loading criteria and then you have the truss manufacturer who provides the truss drawings and calculations that are specific only to the trusses. For the construction documents to be complete the truss supplier must design the individual trusses and provide the drawings and calculations with them. In some jurisdictions outside the Las Vegas area, it is allowable for the project contractors to submit these so-called truss shop drawing packages to the building department as a deferred submittal after the permits are issued. That procedure is becoming less common nationwide and is not existing in the jurisdictions near Las Vegas anymore. So the advantage of the deferred submittal procedure is that the project owner can obtain a permittable plan set for bidding and then award the contract based on that plan set. After the signing of the contract with the general contractor, that selected general contractor would then hire a truss supplier to provide the truss submittal and deliver it to the building department for review and approval before building the trusses. The need for the truss submittal prior to permitting leaves the owner with a sequence of operations problem. Many owners prefer to commit to a general contractor only after the total project is known. However, building departments have been known to sometimes add cost to the project during the plan review process. Therefore, project owners have the option of committing to a general contractor for the entire project to get the trust submittal or to commit to the general contractor only to the extent that obtaining the trust submittal is included or owners can just pay the trust supplier directly for the trust submittal. Once the owner has the trust submittal it must be approved by the structural engineer as compliant with the structural engineers requirements and then it goes to the building department with the remainder of the construction documents. So why is this important? When a project is designed and built it is necessary to know what the next thing to do is during each step in the project's progress. Therefore, whoever is expected to organize the effort uh, to obtain the trust submittal should be aware that it is needed and try to get this work scheduled in advance so that when this work is ready to proceed it can be done immediately. You don't want to be stuck in a queue waiting for a month. Normally the actual time to design the trusses and engineer them is only a few days. Um, for a normal small to medium sized project. However, projects often sit in the queue there for about a month because whoever is organizing the project just suddenly realized they needed this and then they had to wait for whichever person actually does that task at the trust manufacturers to get 
um, ready to do their project or to finish who was ever in front of them in the queue. So um, you don't want to lose a month or longer waiting because you didn't know this problem was coming. Once the drawings from a specific supplier are permitted with the plans, you cannot use those drawings if you decide to use another supplier. So therefore, the hiring of the supplier to create the submittal is essentially a commitment to use that supplier. This is because anything can be changed after the permit is issued, but it becomes problematic to the progress of the project. What possible order of critical path tasks can be used to get the permit using this system on a small to medium sized project? So first the architect designs the building, then he gives the soils report and the architectural drawings to the structural engineer who designs the structure of the building. The job is then normally bid out, making the selection of the best trust supplier apparent. And then the trust supplier is given the contract only for the trust submittal package, normally not to build the trusses, but just for the submittal package. And then the trust submittal package is delivered to the structural engineer for his approval. And then after the structural engineer has reviewed and approved these trust drawings and compared them with the remainder of the construction documents, then they're delivered to the building department who reviews them and eventually issues the permit. So, frequently asked questions on this topic. Why do we do it this way? Well, one answer is it's the most common way that it's done for small and medium sized projects that are using wood trusses or even light gauge steel trusses. Um, then the uh, is, is this way just mentioned the only way to do it? No, absolutely not. There's lots of different ways to do it. This is just the most common way that I'm explaining to you. Is it the fastest way? No, definitely not. The uh, deferred submittal way is the fastest way, so if you live in a jurisdiction where they'll allow a deferred submittal, definitely go with that option if you're trying to save time. Then, is it the cheapest way? Well. The reason why it's the most common way is it is often the cheapest way for construction cost. But if you're in a situation where you're making monthly payments on the land, then it may not be the least expensive way because this process actually takes longer and so that would depend on how much your payments are on the land. Um, then who can do this for me? Well, of course, as your architect, I'm going to tell you your architect can do everything for you. Um, you can also have your contractor do it. Um, for projects that are more civil, say a bridge or something like that, then it's common for a civil engineer or a structural engineer to do it. And then uh, for projects that are not very aesthetic, um, their looks are not a big concern. Sometimes a structural engineer is hired only and there is no architect and then it can be common for the structural engineer to do it. And of course uh, in Nevada as a, a property owner you're free to do the legwork on these kind of things and uh, save a little money on the logistics of doing it. Um, it may save you money and it may not save you money to do it for yourself because if this is your first rodeo it's easy to end up getting gored by the bull. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to this video today. Um, this is number seven I believe in a series of videos of frequently asked questions. And um, so I hope you've enjoyed them all and uh, we hope to do some more in the future. I am Ken Small, architect in Las Vegas, Nevada. My telephone number is 702-873-1718. Um, please like this video and all of our others and share them on your Facebook page and go to Yelp and like us there. And uh, always remember our initial consultation at my office is always free. So please come by, um, have a visit with us at the office, talk to us about your project, see if we can offer you some advice that might save you a little time and money or maybe uh, put you on the right path. Have a great day.